show is sponsored by Hive Mind CRM. It is more than just a CRM. It is a real estate and business mastermind that comes with an all-in-one CRM. You can have unlimited websites and users. You can call, text, RVM, and email all in one user interface. And you can set up custom automations for any type and multiple businesses. 65% of companies start using a CRM system within the first five years of business. Once implemented, the hive mind will save you on marketing, give you more time, and make more money. One of our users had his first $100,000 a month using our system in June. We want to see you automate and accelerate your business. Text us at 210-972-1842 for future meetings. And of course, to get our $1 course on how to make more than six figures on one land deal. You can schedule your free demo today at hivemindcrm.io. Hey, welcome to today's show. Uh, I'm your host, Daniel Martinez. I have a special guest, Mr. Rick Elmore. Uh, what part of the country are you from? Uh, where you got on? Yeah, thanks for having me on, Daniel. I'm actually in uh, Tempe, Arizona. Tempe, Arizona. I like Air- Phoenix is my favorite city. Yeah, that's <laughs> great. I don't even live there. It's my favorite city. Yeah, I actually grew up in California. I never thought I would say it, but uh, I always thought I'd go back. I went to school out here. But I'm um, definitely a desert rat now, and I love I love living here. It's awesome. Yeah, Arizona, like my wife, I have family here in California, so I don't know when I'll leave if, if I'll leave. But man, Arizona is on my top my top my top list. I love I love Phoenix. Yeah, I love Phoenix. yeah. If you can handle the heat for like you know that you know com, you know overwhelming ridiculous 115 for about three months. Yeah, it's it's I think it's the best place in the country to live. You know it's. It's kind of like a mini LA, you know, it's like 4 million people live here, boom in business, pro teams, you know, nightlife restaurants, schools. I mean, it's a pretty cool uh, little area. So uh, tell us a little about uh, what you do, man. I know you're in the direct mail space. Um, how long have you been doing that for? And uh, was that like, is this like your first business or how many businesses did it take to get to that one? Tell us a little about your story. Yeah, so my background's actually in athletics. I played college and professional sports. Um, played at the University of Arizona in Tucson. Then I was drafted into the NFL in 2011 um, to the Green Bay Packers. Got to live out my childhood dream. Played uh, for three years, but then got into corporate medical device sales and, and marketing. I uh, was pretty successful. Uh, had a pretty successful career there. Um, you know, I was a rookie of the year, my first year, and then was either top 1% or top five sales rep in the company for my last five years there. Went back and did my MBA in 2017. I have a couple semesters left, but um, I left when I started this business. This business started off as an idea, listening to a lecture in a marketing class. Um, always had like the feeling to be an entrepreneur. Um, you know, I was having success in my medical device field, but I had an itch I could not scratch. So when I went back to school, I was kind of looking for something else. And I found this. Um, my marketing professor was saying that, you know, all these other marketing trends were pretty nominal, not super exciting. You know, had marginal success rates. And then he ended the lecture saying that, hey, guys, you know, it still works. It's a good old fashioned handwritten note. And uh has a 99% open rate. And I was like, man, being in sales, if I can get in front of my client 99% of the time, you know, it's going to increase my success, you know, rates, you know, a lot. So um, got to work, you know, flew some technologies in from China, South America. Uh, basically, what we, done, we built the world's only purposely built writing robot. And we help companies automate sending real handwritten notes so they can either automate it based off a trigger happening from within their software or scale it off a spreadsheet. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's a super fast, you know, high, 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 massively high level overview of what we do. But yeah, that's a quick rundown about it. Uh, how long ago did you start that doing it? So it was just around 17. The idea happened. Um, really started working on it in 2018. Um, we got a pen plotter from China, which was a very terrible technology. It's very old and outdated. Um, and it's not good at all. <laughs> but I got, it took me about a month to write out really, you know, almost 500 handwritten notes. That looks terrible. But I, I was so dedicated to proving this proof of concept that this product would work. But um, I would sit there and hand load this machine. It would write a bad note, take it out, write another one. 
And I, I pulled a list of clients I was not working with. I yeah. sent out 500 handwritten notes and I got 28 doctors to call me back, which if you're in sales, like that is like exciting. Like it doesn't happen. A client calls you, right? Um, maybe in marketing it's different, but not in sales. And uh, from those 28 doctors who called me, um, they were like, first, Rick, first, thanks for sending this handwritten note. That's cool. Nobody does that anymore. This offer sounds good. Let's set up a lunch and talk about it. Um, got almost three hundred thousand dollars in sales. It was just under twenty nine thousand dollars in commission. My monthly quota was fifty thousand dollars at a time. Like my whole business, my whole company was going nuts. And from that moment on, I had like the entrepreneurial seizure and just got to work. <laughs> um, has your like um, sports career correlated at all with your entrepreneur career at all? I would say that's why I'm successful is my sports athletic background. Um, everything that I learned and developed for two decades was transferred into my professional career. Um, you know, just all the the hard work, the perseverance, the passion, the desire, will, the competition, getting up every single day and, and working through the pain, the bumps, the bruises, getting knocked down, getting back up again, not quitting. Um, th those are things that you can master. It doesn't matter what you're doing you're going to be successful in anything. It's just most people, you know, they, they give up or they don't like to work hard or when things get, get hard, they don't like to persevere. They look for the grass is greener thing. And that was never me. And that was because I developed all those skills in my, my sports background. Yeah. I, I always, uh, I always like talk about it. Cause I'm like, anybody that's been in sports, like it, it really, it really gives you like a, like, like sports and military. Cause like, they really like ground you. And like, mm -hmm. once you find to like entrepreneurship, it's, it makes it a lot easier. Um, yeah. Not saying that you, you don't have, you're not going to fail or you have the possibility of failing. It's just, I feel like it makes you like a stronger entrepreneur. But, I mean, being an entrepreneur is failing. It's trying new things every single day and failing. Um, it's just people don't like failing. They're afraid of it. I was there. I was to fail. But once you start, you know, turning it from failure to learning, right. And you can really understand that, that. In order to get better, you got to try new things. You got to put yourself outside your comfort zone, right? And fail and then observe why you failed and learn from why you failed and build upon it. That's when things start taking off for you. Yeah, yeah, 100%, 100%. Um, I, like, I like direct mail because I'm, I'm in the real estate business. So direct mail is like one of those things where like a lot of people still use it. And I, I have a, I actually have a texting platform. So I text a lot of people and like mm -hmm. our, our open rate, like people see it within two minutes. Of, it's like 80% or something like that mm -hmm. uh, for text message analytics. So 80% of people will see your message, but 99% direct mail still works. It's kind of, it kind of, it, it's, it's one of the things that's always worked. It's just people start doing other things and it's always like, mm -hmm. um, if, if it fits in the budget, but I think, when you always, um, when you're doing like a good product, like handwritten notes, it goes, it cuts through quicker. So you get a better like conversion. Yeah. It, it just stands out, right? If you think of your mailbox, it's empty nowadays. Everybody's competing digitally. Um, yeah. You know, it's social, it's email, it's phone calls, it's text messages, it's push notifications, it's Slack, Twitter, whatever it is, you're just getting bombarded. I think the average person gets 4,000 notifications on their phone a month. That's the average person. That's not a business person. Um, yeah. You know, so you're just being literally inundated with digital noise. So in the mailbox, it's either bills or, or you know, uh, flash, right, or, or marketing material. So when you, for us, you know, and we do work with a, a ton of real estate investors. I see that order come through every day or at least every other day. Like, we're interested in buying your house. Are you interested in selling your house? I see that all the time um, because especially with those high ticket price items, right? Um, you want to connect with somebody personally, right? Because it's an emotional purchase or it's an emotional sell, right? That's probably the biggest asset somebody will ever have is their house. So to stand out amongst all those other people that are competing in that mailbox in a more personal way, right? A handwritten note just sticks out. Um, when you have that pen, real pen envelope, not a digital printed font, because it does look different. Like our machines, um, our machines have two and a half pounds of downward pressure so it actually digs into the paper so um, depending on what cardstock we use like you can actually see the pen indentations like the ink actually flows differently so it's not consistent like it would be on a, a laser printer and it actually smears so um yeah i think you know handwritten notes they're going to make a, a comeback with vengeance you know especially how everybody's swung digital you know we've kind of zigged when everybody else zagged um and 
you know, they're just a, they're a valuable business tool. You know, they're a great retention tool for relationships, but they're also an awesome acquisition tool because it's different and it gets open and read. Yeah, I, I feel like there's a lot more business coming your way, especially with like Facebook and Google, with Apple shutting yeah. down analytics. That's, yeah. a, that's a marketing tool that went away. With texting, we're getting hit with a A2P2 uh, regulation for texting. So we're put, we're, we're pivoting into something else too. So it's just like, once you once you cut off all the marketing channels, you're going back to direct mail and you're going back to cold calling and you're going back to RVMs. And it's just one of those things where like, when all those things get tapped and cut off and they're not as effective anymore, you still have to, like marketing still has to be done. And I think that's one of the big things about this. If you're a business owner, the marketing still has to be done, bottom line. Yeah. Just yeah. Where you're, where you're well, I think uh, what a good marketer will do nowadays is have a tool belt um, that they can attack their business from every angle. You know, you're not going to be like a, a one kind kind of, or one tool kind of guy. I'm only going to be digital, right? Or I'm only going to be social. Or I'm only going to do outbound email. Or I'm only going to do direct mail, right? You have to be efficient in all facets and figure out a way to have them all work together. So when we do work with our marketers, we do work with ways that they can track it you know, through QR codes, call rail, you know, call trackers, landing pages, right? So they can kind of have that one, you know, universe of everything working together. But you have like a holistic approach when you come to your sales and marketing approach in your business. And I just always tell people like, we're just a tool. We're a powerful tool. We're a, a tool that you should have to build relationships, you know, and, and, you know, acquisition, farm, right? Whatever, reach out, you know, fill that that pipeline. But uh, yeah, you have to have a holistic approach and this is a tool you can use. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, it's uh, one of my, one of my first contracts I ever got was I, I my wife had cardstock paper and I wrote, I literally wrote a handwritten letter out. I put mm -hmm. everything and uh, yeah. he, he responded from it. It was pretty interesting. He's like, I, he's like, how'd you get my address? And I'm like, well, it's. <laughs> i love seeing that come across because we use it for prospecting too like sometimes people call me just to ask me like where'd you get my data <laughs> erase it <laughs> that's funny yeah oh so are you doing like postcards or are you doing i'm sure you're doing all the but postcards you're doing letters you're doing um, yeah i mean really what we're trying to do is we start at the handwritten note uh we will do postcards we try not to because the way that mail is done nowadays it's all handled through machines yep um, you know, from if you're doing a postcard that's printed, I mean, the card's getting printed in the machine. There's a postmark getting put on by a machine. It's getting sorted by a machine, you know, so that postcard's getting beat up. So we really believe that that hand, note, you, know, you know, it costs a little bit more. It really protects the card. It makes it look a lot nicer. Um, so the majority of our business is handwritten notes, but, you know, we'll, we'll offer just handwriting services for handwritten envelopes. If you want to include like a printed flyer, right, to keep costs down so you can increase your, your volume or even postcards. But we really do believe like the handwritten note, you know, will outperform. And there, there, there's data out there to talk about, you know, the open rates, um, you know, with a handwritten note. Um, what we've done in the past, so we've attached QR codes and in dollar check said so just uh, scan this QR code and this ten dollar check is yours you know we're just we're tracking open rate case studies and um, you know that's ways that we've tested the open rate um, we've also done the same thing uh, with postcards and it was a fully printed um, postcard with just a handwritten address and we, we did the same thing the hey scan this QR code again a ten dollar free Starbucks card and those didn't perform as well because it looks a little bit more like impersonal if that yeah. makes sense you know so yeah. yeah i mean we try to say the handwritten note in the handwritten envelopes kind of like trojan horse right it's going to get you past all the junk it's going to get it open and in the the user's hands are you guys incorporating like uh like color letters and or cutter like um not letters but um envelopes ah, that's sort of sure about. yeah i mean we're a writing service so i mean as long as it, uh, it's anywhere between a three by three all the way up to a nine by 12. So if that's a three inch by three inch piece of paper all the way up to a nine by 12 inch piece of paper, we can write on it. So um, and that's why we built our own robot recently. And we're really trying to like get out there and spread the word. You know, we're a, a, um, no loans, no investors, um, no debt business. And now that we have like the funds to get out and share the story, that's why we're trying to like educate people on this product and this platform. 
Um, yeah, we spent about two years building our own handwriting robot. We're the only company in the world that's actually invested in building their own handwriting robot. And it's really important to the end user because it gives you the best possible product. Those machines, you know, those packages that we're using, that's what companies try to use nowadays. And there's just obvious, obvious, um, um, what do you call it, patterns. You, like you can kind of tell if you're looking at it, you know, like eh, maybe this was written by a machine and there was no way around it. So that's why we had to build it. But yeah, anybody, if you have a special campaign, we can absolutely help you with that. I've seen I've seen other people do like, uh, they'll use like a credit, Cricut or a 3D printer to do handwritten notes and i and I, i've seen i've seen other people we've do tried it we've tried it i mean I, I spent the first two and a half years trying everything we flew technology in from france i mean south america china we worked with an auto pen company um, a machine that was built in like the 80s i mean it's running off of micro word you can't scale it there i mean the load capacity is is tiny you can only hold, hold a half an inch of paper that means you have to have somebody sit there nonstop reloading it it's, so in order to scale something like this, I mean, I was a football player, you know, athletic background, and I've started a off robotics, electrical engineering, industrial automation company. So <laughs> it's been a it's been a wild ride to say the least. So are, is all this done in the U.S.? Do you have like how big is the machine? Because I'm always curious about that. Because you know, to do this at scale, you need something that works efficiently and effectively. And yeah, you have to have, to have so it in house. The footprint of it right now um so it, it's 17 inches uh deep and then 32 inches long and that's the first iteration of it um so i mean it's it's a pretty small footprint it's you know it can sit on it no it's it, it can sit on basically anybody's desk we do have um we do own uh the the autopen.com we do have i don't want to there's any of my competitors i i love i'm going to give them some insider information here right now we do plan on selling these, which is just going to completely up disrupt the market. But um, that was another reason why we built it. You know, there's just a business in selling these machines to, you know, realtors or mortgage professionals. We get asked it all the time. So, um, yeah, it's a pretty small footprint. It can fit on basically any at-home um, desk. And that was, you know, thought of purposely because we had the intentions to sell these down the line. So you have patents and stuff like that to uh, to protect yourself on that on that. Usability, right? So, yeah, so I, I love this quote by I think it was Elon Musk. Like patents are just like lawsuit coupons. Um, you know, they're just going to lead to ba you know basically lawsuits down the line. But um, yeah, we're going to have six patents on it. We're working on them right now. There's just constant revisions, clearing things up. You know, you're working with your patent attorney to make sure everything's explained in so much detail that it's protected as, as much as possible. But we'll have three design and three uh, utility and six total patents on it. Congratulations, man. That's awesome. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's been four and a half years of just pure like roller coaster, white knuckling <laughs> ride. For anybody that goes down the patent route, like I know it's very extensive and very yeah, it's expensive. Yeah, it's, it's extensive, extensive and expensive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Extensive and expensive. Yeah. So I, I will I will I'll get I'll, I'll I'll give you some flowers for that one because I I I've I've heard not that I've done it but I've heard the process is very painstaking. <laughs> it is. I mean, everything about this has been painstaking <laughs> trying to get people to use robots. But yeah, I mean, I just think there's a, a genuine need for it, you know. Especially, you know, if your audience most of your audience is a projecting tool, but um, I think it's something. I forget who the guy is, but some guy preaches sending like five hundred note a day, you know, to help grow like your real estate business, your real estate referral business. Yeah. What is his name? I'm drawing a blank on it. You know what I'm talking about? He's like a real estate. I've mentor. never heard of him, but I know I know uh, it's, a, it's a he's strategy. in San Diego. Yeah, he's in San Diego. I forget his name. So what's the what's the pro, what's like the the power that your machine your seat machine that you're working on can do to like um like letters per minute, whatever, like what's the rate of that? Well, for us, you know, if you're doing a business like Simply Noted, where you're sending tens of thousands of these a day, um, it needs to be vertically integrated. So it needs to be super efficient. Yeah. And you have to think about that from how orders come in to how orders get out and designing a, a platform that allows you to efficiently, you know, take those orders and produce them at a level where you, you know, you want the robots doing a lot more work than the humans, right? Like, yeah. so, Prevent um, you know, issues and errors. Yeah. You know, just from, you know, having 
systems built to track the amount of ink that's left in a pen, you know, having higher load capacities, you know, alerting people, you know, so these machines are intelligent, alerting, you know, admin or whoever warehouse staff, like none of these were available before. Um, so, you know, our machines can do anywhere from like 300 to 500 handwritten notes a day. Um, the real, you know, power though in it is controlling all the technology. So it's a lot more efficient, you yeah. know, from start to finish, not just, you know, writing speed. Yeah, 305, man, that's, that's still, that's still significant. Man, it's like it helps, it's more, you know, if it's just cards, it's more, but that's like a full unit, like a handwritten note and a handwritten envelope. Yeah. Um, you said you're you're taking this to market soon, right? It's not up yet. Well, we, we, right now we're, you know, we're like, we we want to do all the reorders, and you know, our plan is we built simply noted to sell it. So we're about four and a half years into um, this journey. We just got yeah. done with these machines a few months ago, so now we're in the production phase. Um, so we're going to scale this business a little bit more. I have a, you know, we can probably double before it really takes a massive investment to go to like a mid eight figure 50 plus million dollar a year business um, and then we'll sell it to some other company with deeper pockets who can take it there you know with you know executive and in systems and processes and in the power to do that you know we've done this with no debt so um but yeah after we sell simply noted we'll take this to market that that's why we built the machine to get the patent so when we do sell it there's going to be somebody out there who's going to try to rip off the design i know it like it's you it's know it's, <laughs> yeah so that's why we did that's why we built it built the machine to make our business better to sell it and then once we sell this we can move into you know a distribution model no that's that's cool man um people people steal everything <laughs> Yeah, no such thing as original idea anymore, especially with the, the age of the internet, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy. It's definitely pretty crazy out there. Um, so build to sell, was that the plan from the beginning? Um, yeah, so first I wanted to get out of the, the corporate world. I kind of saw, I'm, I'm sure like most people, you kind of chase your tail or chase that constant care that you can never get. Yeah. Um, and they always break you down, you know, help you, uh, you'll build the territory, then they speak it to somebody else, make you do it again, or you can work the corporate ladder and never see your family, get divorced. You know, I never wanted that lifestyle. So when I started this, um, the end goal was definitely to sell Simply Noted. So when you're building a business, that's a lifestyle business, just building a business that's built to sell, it's completely different. Um, you know, my mindset was five years, you know, just go hard for five years and then sell it. So um, so I'll have about a year left to do that. So I think we could still hit that, but the show is sponsored by the list guys. Do you need more leads in your local or virtual market? One in 10 small businesses don't invest in any kind of marketing. The list guys have over 35 plus list types to choose from, and you can mix and match any list or criteria. We also use the skip trace list and provide up to seven numbers and email addresses. Every list you purchase will be scrubbed against previous purchases. The list guys are here to save you time. Contact the list guys today at www.1listguys.com. That's www.1listguys.com. Yeah, we've just been growing. Our website has over 300,000 users a month. You know, we've built our own technology. Now, this last year is about dumping money into marketing and sales and scale it as much as we can and prepare it, you know, develop some better systems and processes, basically build this business in a box and, and hand it off to somebody. Yeah. That's, that's awesome, man. Congratulations, man. I think I'm, I'm really, uh, I, I, it's, it's commending to see <laughs> you hit such high numbers because in about four years, that's, it's pretty, pretty outstanding. So sure. yeah, the only way that I've done that is just, I, I've reinvested every dollar back into this. Failure is not an option, you know. So when I do fail, like I try to fix it as soon as possible and, and yeah. overcome it and move on. And I think a lot of people, um, you know, if you don't, if you want a peaceful life, don't become an entrepreneur, right? Because yeah. it's not peaceful. If you want, you know, uh, a hectic life, do it like this. Like, <laughs> you know, only give yourself a certain time frame to do it because you're just going to work harder and harder and harder and harder and harder. You know. But, um, 
yeah, it's, it's definitely been a lot of work, um, especially doing it without money. You know, it's, it's a, there's a couple of people who've tried to do what we've done, but instead of investing in the platform or the technology, all they do is put it in marketing, just like, uh, it's the worst thing you could do. I don't know if this, you have any entrepreneurs out there who are starting businesses. Don't, don't get money or raise money to invest in marketing until you have a solid platform, a solid product, product market, that, you know, consistent cash flow. Um, you have an idea on, you know, how to lower your, your CPA, like, um, that's the problem. These entrepreneurs are just so irresponsible and undisciplined. They'll just, they'll just throw money at marketing and try to bring in, in dollars and they'll be in the red nonstop. You know, it's just, it's, yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> oh man. What is a quote that is somebody yours or somebody else's that you resonate with? I have a few. I have a, in my locker room uh, in college, there was a quote that said, what you do speak so loudly, I can't hear what you're saying. So I always thought that was action to speak louder than words. I'd rather be known for somebody who, you know, saw the results, not was somebody I had to you know, tell them about my results. So I think that was always, you know, an impactful quote. And um, yeah, I would say that that's probably the one that sticks out the most. Uh, that's a good one. I've never heard that one before. I always like asking this one because you always get like different perspectives. And now that, that was, that's a good one. I'm, I'm going to have to like, yeah. I'm going to have to cut that video out and use it for short form because that's how, that's <laughs> definitely a better one I've heard. Nice. Not, that, not that none of them have heard bad ones. It's just that one's top tier. That one's top tier. Um, so simply noted, can you tell us a little about where, where, people, where can people find you online and uh, what, what type of people you're trying to help? as far as in your yeah life. so you know, my name is rick elmore you can just go on to linkedin i'm on linkedin basically all day um i know we can go to <laughs> yeah i usually respond to things in a couple minutes there but um yeah or go to simply noted.com that's s as in sam i m as in mary p l y noted.com um and just go to the business page and request a sample kit we do a really good job of sending you this nine by twelve pocket folio with a ton of information and samples and case studies and that's free we spend about 15 dollars to get that in your hands um and usually what happens when people see that all the light bulbs go off they get really excited and they call us with their ideas and we help them accomplish it but i say you know simply noted as a retention-based business you know we help you build deeper relationships with your clients increase lifetime value um, get more referrals get better reviews but there's definitely an acquisition side of this so if you guys have some outbound project campaigns that you guys wanted to discuss we're happy to consult with talk about list cleaning list how to track it set up qr codes you know call trackers landing pages all that stuff as well but yeah i'll just say go to simply noted.com if you're even remotely interested in seeing this and just requesting a sample kit uh one thing i, want, I really want to ask too is uh, how big is your operation like how many people do you have employed so we have 11 full-time employees, but then I have a whole stable of like contractors and VAs. Um, it's the only way to, to scale a business like this is contractors and VAs because you need the help, but you can't, you know, overwhelm yourself with a heavy, heavy uh, payroll, you know, every couple of weeks. But um, yeah, I mean, we have a 3000 square foot facility here in Tempe. Um, we're kind of bursting out of the gills here. We're starting to go up on racks, but uh, our facilities can be a building that we buy and um, right now all that all the available funds are going to building a fleet or an army of our new writing robots so maybe in 2024 you know we'll be buying a builder building that's a awesome building. well congratulations i had uh, much to your success i i wish you good fortune and uh thanks for providing good value to the, to the community because i know handwritten letters work they do <laughs> thanks for having me on i appreciate it all right thank you have a great day thanks for coming on appreciate you thanks for watching this youtube video we hope you found value please like subscribe and hit the bell to watch more videos just like this one